Ever since I got married, I have been subjected to bullying from my mother-in-law. It's not just nagging. She throws things at me and shouts insults loudly. My husband, Asher, doesn't help at all. He simply turns a blind eye. How do I endure such a situation, you ask? Well, I have a secret strategy up my sleeve. My name is Madison, and I'm 29 years old. It's our second year of marriage with Asher, and we don't have any children yet. We met at work, although we were in different departments. We started seeing each other and got married after two years. Not only our family and relatives, but also our colleagues and friends celebrated our marriage wholeheartedly. I wish time could have stood still back then. I was so happy thinking that way, but there was no way for me at the time to foresee the hell that awaited me. We got married, and right away, we set off on our honeymoon. We spent two weeks in the Maldives, making memories and enjoying a luxurious time, and then returned home. The next day, I was relaxing at our new home, when suddenly, I received a phone call from my mother-in-law, the first one since we got married. Hello, I answered. Oh, Madison, you're back from your trip, right? My mother-in-law's voice was sharp. Yes, I just got back yesterday. I tried to appear calm and not show any signs of fatigue. What's up today, mother-in-law? I inquired. What's up? You think there's nothing? You should have come over here after your trip. That's why I called, she replied sharply. Huh? Did we have plans to visit? I was confused. Huh? What are you talking about? We didn't discuss anything like that. Her tone was defensive, and I was puzzled by her inconsistent statements. Um, I don't recall making plans to visit, I said, trying to keep the conversation smooth. Well, yes, she replied. But you contacted us we didn't show up there, right? I continued. Don't make me repeat the same thing over and over, she snapped. I didn't understand what she meant. Mom, please wait a moment. I did buy souvenirs, but they are perishable, and I plan to go to your house with Asher on our next day off, I explained. After coming back from your honeymoon, it's common sense to show up quickly with souvenirs. Just understand that and come over, you useless daughter-in-law, she got sassy again. The call ended abruptly, and it took quite some time for me to comprehend the stormy situation. Our common sense is so different, and my mind is in complete panic. Thinking that things won't be resolved if it continues like this, I forcefully woke up my husband, who was sleeping in bed. Hey, Asher, are you awake? I need to talk to you. I gently shook his shoulder, and my husband opened his drowsy eyes. What is it? I'm still tired, he muttered. I just got a call from your mother. Well, from mom, I explained sitting up. She said... Why can't you show up after coming back from your honeymoon? It's common sense to come over with souvenirs. That's what she told me, I told him. Uh, I see. Well, forget about it. I'm tired today, and we were planning to go there next week anyway, so it should be fine, my husband said, lying back down on the bed again. Your mother seemed really angry, so make sure to contact her as well, okay? I insisted. Yeah, yeah, he responded half-heartedly, without making eye contact. I was a little worried but believed that my husband would contact his mother. I trusted him and didn't push further. One week later, as planned, we headed to my in-law's house with souvenirs from our honeymoon. As soon as we arrived, my mother-in-law glared at me and said, So, even an uncultured daughter-in-law like you came. At first, I thought I misheard and ignored it, but my mother-in-law's verbal abuse kept getting worse. Mom, here are the honeymoon souvenirs. My husband handed her the souvenirs, and my mother-in-law let out a delighted voice. Thank you, Asher. Did you choose this just for me? She asked. Of course. Sorry for coming late. Both Madison and I were tired, he explained. That's no problem. Well, Madison doesn't seem tired at all, though, she remarked with a sharp tone. After that, she made an even more unbelievable comment. Hey, Asher, wasn't marrying Madison a mistake after all? She stated. Huh? I couldn't help but let out a surprised noise at my mother-in-law's outrageous words. Asher, think about it. Madison wasn't tired, but she didn't show up here. Isn't that rude? My mother-in-law continued to escalate. No, it's not like I wasn't tired. I tried to interject, but my mother-in-law glared at me. You know what? I was against this marriage from the beginning. Just look at your face, so plain and unattractive. 
and her figure too, right? But I never imagined she would turn out to be this lacking in common sense, she sneered. What's with that sudden attitude? I wanted to retort from the depths of my heart, but since we had just gotten married, I couldn't bring myself to utter abusive words to my mother-in-law. Hey, Asher, you think so too, right? She asked, turning to my husband. After showing a sign of hesitation, my husband spoke. Well, she can at least manage the basic household chores. I think she has some value as a wife for now. Value as a wife? She can at least manage the basic household chores? What? I was shocked. Who does he think he is? Is it okay to talk like that? Wait, Asher, what are you saying? I asked, puzzled by my husband's statement. We got married because we wanted to, right? You said you would be happy to marry someone like me. That's how you proposed, right? I asked. Yeah, I think I'm happy. If we have children, it will be an heir for my mom, and Madison listens to everything I say. In the future, we can even live with my mom, he said, almost nonchalantly. Wait a minute, was that supposed to mean? Did we get married just for living with your mom and having an heir? I inquired, perplexed. No, I do love you, Madison, but as for living with my mom, I thought only you could make it possible, he explained. What is this person saying? I thought he married me because he loved me. To talk about heirs and living together so explicitly. My mother-in-law watched our exchange with a smirk on her face. Did she think she was fortifying her statements? My husband seemed satisfied, too, with a smile on his face. From then on, my mother-in-law periodically summoned us as a couple and calmly harassed me. Prepare the meal quickly, she demanded one day. Yes, I'm coming, I replied, rushing to the kitchen. What's this? Mashed potatoes? Is this a spiteful act? The taste is too bland, she uttered contemptuously. My mother-in-law threw the plate at me, and I ended up with mashed potatoes all over me. Ouch! I exclaimed in pain. You're so clumsy. Can't cook. Can't have children. What a useless daughter-in-law, she berated me. Why is this happening? I wondered silently, trying to hold back tears. Just be quiet and clean it up, she barked. With mashed potatoes all over my head, I wiped the floor with tears in my eyes. Even in times like this, my husband ignored the situation. Not only that, but he also started lecturing me as if I were at fault. Madison, can you be more efficient? Just because we don't have children, it makes my mother upset. If you can't even cook properly, then I have no worth, right? He trampled on me. I'm sorry, but I thought the cooking was fine, because you always said it was delicious, Asher. I tried to explain. That's obviously just flattery, isn't it? For me, my mother's cooking is the standard. If you can't cook properly, at least make an effort to have children. You keep refusing every night, saying you're tired. He scolded. I'm sorry, I muttered, feeling defeated. During that time, I was overwhelmed with work. On top of that, I was frequently summoned to my in-law's house on weekends. I was completely exhausted both mentally and physically. I kept rejecting my husband every night, saying, I'm tired, sorry. It became unbearable for me that he wouldn't protect me from my mother-in-law, so I desperately refused him every night. One day, my husband and I were once again called to my in-law's house. As expected, my mother-in-law approached me about the issue of having children. Listen, Madison, she began with a stern tone. I heard from Asher that you're refusing to have children. Is that true? Well, it's not like that, I replied, trying to explain. I'm not refusing or anything. Don't talk back, she snapped, cutting me off. You can't even handle the household chores, and now you can't even produce an heir. Your deficiencies are so overwhelming, it's beyond exasperating, she concluded. I'm sorry, I muttered, feeling the familiar sting of her words. She glanced at me, her eyes narrowing as if she had suddenly thought of something. All right, get pregnant within the next six months. If you can't, then I'll have you divorce my son. Within six months, Madison, she gave me an ultimatum. Asher, who had been listening, nodded in agreement. That sounds interesting, he said with a smirk. The deadline is six months, understood? If you can't produce an heir, we have no use for you. You're useless, he added. At that moment, I felt an overwhelming desire to abandon all the efforts I had made. Am I just a machine for bearing an heir? Am I just a future caregiver? In the end, was I not truly needed for myself? I decided that I wouldn't let this continue. Just six more months. Within that time, I would definitely get my revenge. I would turn the tables. 
And so my revenge plot began. Since then, I silently accepted all the mistreatment from my mother-in-law. Madison, could you clean the house today, please? She asked one day, her voice sweet but laced with command. Understood, I replied obediently. And also, prepare dinner, she added. Do you know the procedure? The seasoning should be strong, pasta firm, and the meat well cooked, right? She instructed. That's right, I confirmed, maintaining my composure. You can count on me, I added. She seemed satisfied. Well then, I'm counting on you. Okay, leave it to me, I said, playing the role of the devoted daughter-in-law. Because I had endured so much mistreatment, I understood exactly what my mother-in-law wanted to say. Desperate to play the role, I acted with all my might. After half a year of obeying my mother-in-law's orders, the day arrived when a gathering was taking place at my in-law's house. By this time, my mother-in-law had completely treated me like a servant. She no longer yelled at me as I moved according to her commands. Madison, have you brought the coffee and the snacks for everyone? She asked. They are already prepared, I replied. We will also serve a meal today. Have you done the preparations? She asked firmly. All taken care of, I answered calmly. Seeing me like that, the relatives praised me one after another. She's a good wife. She's so capable, they said. But it seemed to bother my mother-in-law as her mood quickly soured. Madison, did you buy the alcohol I asked for? She suddenly demanded. Alcohol? I asked, confused. I wasn't asked to buy any, I added. Huh? What are you talking about? I told you to buy some delicious wine to serve everyone, she said, raising her voice. I'm sorry, but I really wasn't told to do that, I tried to explain. Don't make excuses. Just go and buy it already. You're really useless, and it's so frustrating. She berated me loudly making sure everyone could hear, acting as if she had said it when she hadn't. It was her usual pattern. In the middle of the frozen atmosphere, I removed my apron and headed to the kitchen to go buy the wine. That's when my uncle came rushing over. Don't let it bother you, okay? He said softly, trying to comfort me. Thank you, uncle, I replied, touched by his kindness. Still, you can endure so much. Those insults, they are just too much. He continued to support me. You can endure so much. I had been waiting for those words. I turned to face the room and proclaimed loudly, as if releasing the grudges I had been holding on to. No, really, I'm fine, I said, my voice steady. After all, I'm getting divorced today. All the relatives turned and looked at me in surprise. Even my uncle exclaimed in a bewildered voice, Divorce? Yes, that's right, I confirmed. The truth is, my mother-in-law told me that if I didn't get pregnant within six months, I should get a divorce. Today is the deadline. Yes, I'm bidding farewell to this stifling family today, so I'm perfectly fine with it, I firmly concluded. My husband and my mother-in-law had twisted expressions and turned pale. Ignoring the two of them, I spoke again. Well, if I'm told that I'm not needed because I can't bear a successor, then there's nothing I can do about it. It's a shame that I won't be able to see all of you anymore, but it's their decision, I added, and picked up the prepared luggage and said, Well then, leaving the room behind. Wait a minute, my mother-in-law called out from behind. What is it? I asked, turning back. I'll extend the deadline for you. Another six months. No, one year. So just continue being Asher's wife as before. Well, that would be the case, right? She pleaded her voice trembling. I had acted like a good wife for the past six months just to be detained like this, but I wouldn't let them have their way anymore. I had endured it all for this day. No, thank you, I said firmly. Looking straight at my mother-in-law, I continued. I've been a good wife for the past six months. I'll admit that you've become much kinder, but you know, the things you said and did will never disappear. I absolutely refuse to continue being part of your family, I snapped. Y you Who do you think you are, saying such things as a daughter-in-law? Do you think divorce will be forgiven? She screamed, her face contorted in anger. That's right, Madison, Asher added, his voice harsh. Do you even understand what you're saying? He added. As if to show them, I slowly took out my smartphone. I have recorded all of your past abusive words on my phone. It would be in your best interest not to say anything that could further incriminate yourselves, right? I threatened. Upon hearing those words, my husband and mother-in-law both slumped down in their seats, 
their faces drained of color. Leaving my in-law's house behind, I headed straight to the lawyer's office. Armed with recordings of the verbal abuse from my husband and mother-in-law, I filed for divorce. Thanks to a skillful lawyer, the divorce went relatively smoothly. The incidents of harassment from my husband and mother-in-law were exposed to everyone. Since that day, it seems that our relatives have all declared complete estrangement. To make matters worse, my husband works at the same company as me. The divorce scandal spread like wildfire. I heard everyone's whispers behind my back every day as I went to work. Oh, how disgusting. He used to post about his close relationship with his wife in front of everyone. He's the worst, bullying his wife with his mother. What a mama's boy, and so on. Given his prideful nature, it's only a matter of time before he quits his job. On the other hand, I've started living alone and enjoying a carefree life. I'm no longer a baby-making machine or a caregiver. It's just me, enjoying my own freedom. No one will interfere with my life anymore. Absolutely not. If I have the opportunity to be with someone again, I want to be with someone who will treat me properly and cherish me.